I'm Heather, and I've been researching into the medical properties of allergic acid, which is all present within the images shown on the board. So the, ta the, ta the project began with our teacher asking, if there was no antibiotics around, what would we use? Now my grandma, who has traditional Irish roots, as a midwife, turned around to me and said, whiskey. So, out of all humor, we, oops, what am I doing? It broke on me. <laughs> <laughs> so of all humor, we researched it anyway. And um, we came up with this, and it came up with the compound large acid. Moving forward with that, we. Moving a large acid within the whiskey. Moving forward with that, we looked into the Irish translations and the Latin translations. And what was really interesting to me is the fact that this knowledge, though uncommon to it was, wasn't new. It was just forgotten. Um, so I started my research, as you do, and we sort of found it in different compounds, as you saw, like pomegranates, walnuts strawberries, raspberries, cherries. So we didn't know if it came from the whiskey or somewhere else. Um, Speyside Cooper in Northern Scotland sent us slats of barrels to test. Now, um, <laughs> so in doing this, we were discovering whether it was in the oak, where we originally thought, or within the sherry that was previously in the barrels. Um, we set out to get some large acid originally, I may say. It was very expensively discovered at £10,000 per gram. So we asked around universities, none of them had it. So we bit the bullet, bought about 50 micrograms. York University turned around to us about a week later and told us they found it for £12 per 2.5 grams. So that was fun. Um, <laughs> So we did the various aseptic techniques of disc diffusion and well diffusions, which will be mentioned on my colleague's slides later. Um, no, wrong slide again. Oh, sorry. Um, that's where I am. There we go. Further into the project, as I said, we got slats of wood. So we did an electrolysis on them. Now, we weren't getting results from that. And we later discovered, after looking into further research papers, that this was because we were getting very small amounts. Now, considering that the whiskey's in the barrels for years and only gets a certain amount of large acid, we had it in there for about a month with nothing. So we came to the conclusion it's in the sherry, in the sherry, in the sherry and the barrels. So, what most of the adults are probably wondering now is if I drink a lot, if I drink whiskey, apart from the obvious, what will happen? Well. <laughs> It is proven to have some oral cancer, to help with some oral cancer, help manage certain auto diseases such as diabetes. It's an anti-inflammatory, a disinfectant. It can help manage chronic heart diseases and also acts as a coagulant. I have a feeling these are in the wrong order. So, as I say, our interest was in its properties as the rise of antibacterial resistance within the bacteria. And we looked at the zones of inhibition and we found we didn't have results against certain types of bacteria. Um, and this is probably because the stuff we were getting weren't as strong as it may have been in the whiskey or because of another factor. And so we went on, we wrote stuff up we wrote a conclusion, and we are here now. So thank you for listening.